Okay, so I've got everything again all cut out here. Now I'll just bring in the stamp and die set that I've used. So it's a nice big one. Now you don't need a large die cutting machine for this because the width is under the width of a normal, you know, like your standard Sizzix big shots. So you can see there, there's your your, your A4 size, it comes way under that. So you can just use, like I said, a normal die cutting machine. I'll tell you the actual width of the largest one there. Yeah, it's, it's not even at five and you've got six, I think it's six and a half. So um, yeah, that's always a good thing. And then this is the stamp set here as well. So that's what I've used and I'm gonna talk you through the pieces you're gonna need. So I've got a piece of cardstock. So I am gonna make this into, like I said at the beginning, it's a posh card. So this is a piece of four by eight and I've just scored along the eight inch side at four inches and then just fold and burnish that piece. Okay, and we're gonna cut that some more in a moment. Then what I've, what I've got is you've got these pieces here, which I did mention it yesterday, or it might not be yesterday, but the previous tutorial when I done the little kind of snow globe things, lots of this coordinates with that as well. So, you know, mix everything together. I'll just show you. This is that die set there. That was the one that I showed the other day. So that coordinates with this as well. Okay, so with the largest circle that comes with it, you want to die cut one piece for the back. Now for this one, I've actually used one of the new embossing folders and it's this beautiful one here. It's called Time on Your Hands Embossing Folder. But this fits, again, Olga's thought about everything. It all fits perfectly, but it's, look, you can see there. So I just die cut the circle in the craft card and then I just laid this one piece just over that middle bit and then run that through. And then what I did is I've got a little bit of brown ink on one of my brushes and I just went over it just ever so slightly and it just brings out that beautiful embossed pattern just a little bit more. Okay, so that's that one. Then I've gone and done it again in this beautiful rose gold coppery colour. And then I've also gone and done it then in the smaller one because I'm gonna stick this on the back Okay, and because it's a small card, but that's where I'm going to write a little message. And it says there, time is not measured by clocks, but by moments. Really, really nice. Okay, and then you will want to die cut with some acetate with the larger one. Okay, and then you want to, and that's going to be for the front, obviously, and we're going to put the clock face on that. But then you want to bring in the smaller one, pop it in the middle with a bit of washi tape, and then run it through with some of the same lovely copper cardstock here, so you get this ring and that's going to be the frame for the front. That's going to go over the acetate and then we're going to have the clock face in there as well. Or the, at least we're going to have the hands in there. Okay, so that's all the bits there. And then what we're going to do with this piece is with the largest circle, so you want to sit this on top of the, you want it, it's going to be a top folding card. So I've got my fold at the top there. And then just stick it so that it overhangs, the cut line comes up over the fold there. Don't worry if it's in the middle, that really doesn't matter because it's a circular card, so the card is this circle size, so don't worry about anything else, but just make sure it overhangs slightly and then we can get that one run through my dime machine. Okay, so you can see there how it's cut, so it's slightly gone off the top, that's what you want. And then just take that one away. Peel that off very carefully. And get rid of that. So now we've got our little dinky little card here, it's so cute. And then what you want to do is whenever you have a circular card, I always find it's handy if you open it up and along the bottom, so if you line up your middle score line with a line on your grid, it doesn't matter what it is, but just make sure it runs nice and straight. And then along the very bottom, just cut off a tiny piece, just very straight. So again, make sure your ruler's all lined up but just cut that off and it will just help ground the card and it will stop it rolling so miss that bit there okay so now when you then pop that up see it just won't roll all right and then i'm just going to burnish that top one a bit more okay so that's everything there then i've also gone and die cut all of the cogs so you see there, you've got one, two, three, four. 
So it's those four. I just die cut all of the hands. They come on one die, so I just ran it through. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use yet, but I have got, should be three. Is one, one's probably flown off somewhere. And then I've also die cut this piece here, which is kind of like the stopwatch part. It's the, the top of the, the pocket watch, and that's that one. It also looks like a light bulb. So again, you know, might want to use it for something else. And then the chain, I have die cut with the same lovely copper rose gold uh, cardstock. But then I've also done it again with craft card and I've stuck it behind. And I've done that again with this piece. I just wanted there to be a little bit more strength to them. So there is two layers there. And then for my little tag here, I've just stamped the time, which is at the top, which is separate. And then I've done to celebrate. And I've got that there and I've just put a little frame of the same mirrored card and a little hole punch there so I can attach it with some string. Okay, so that's everything all die cut. Now we want to start assembling it all. So first of all, I've got this beautiful piece here which I want to stick. I'm just going to use some of my Kalau because that will just help give it lots of strength. So I'm just going to stick that one on first. Okay, then... Now, I probably should have stuck that one underneath, actually, because I don't want all of this. So I'm just going to snip off um, there. All right, so it's completely optional. Again, if you're obviously making this on a card, which is, I guess, probably how Olga had intentionally wanted to use it, but I always like to look at different ways to make things. So what I would say, maybe I can still get that open a little bit. Oh, yes, I can. So I'm just going to pop a little bit more glue in there and then so make sure I've got my base there and then I want to make sure that's not going to interfere Let's bring it up a little bit more about there I think will be fine yeah let's have a little look now when that stands up yeah I think it's going to look really nice okay so that's that one. Then what we want to do is pop that to one side. So I'm just going to let that dry. All those are for our shaker bits in a moment. Okay, so with the frame and the piece of acetate, just flip the frame over and you just want to run some red tape because that will stick nicely to the acetate. Just work around the ring there. Don't worry if it's all the your um, release you know plastic on the tops buckling that's fine it doesn't matter because you're just gonna once you peel that off the actual tape underneath is all stuck so just take that off and then you want to stick this perfectly over this piece here and just lay it down actually like so there we go i mean you could emboss this as well on the front if you want i'm going for more of a kind of a plain pocket watch style because i've got that embossed bit inside which you're going to see just poking through and once the hands are on there and stuff i think it should start to come together quite nicely something very different which is nice to do every now and then this is my lovely i really loved using this stuff it's the silicon foam tape by dot and dab which is by trimcraft so i'm just going to run this around and I might do a double layer I'm just thinking just with the cogs and the the sequins I always like to put quite a bit inside my shakers so I think I'm going to make this a little bit thicker you can just do single layer but the sequins sometimes can be quite bulky in themselves so stick that one down nicely and because it's clear you know you don't really see it it's, um, it's great stuff to use. And I picked up loads of it because I found it in, I think it was every craft a pound when I was at the craft show. So I grabbed quite a few um, rolls of it. And then I'm just going to go over again, start from a different point. Just try and get it sitting right on top. Okay, so before I take that the top off, what I always like to do is I'm just going to grab my anti-static buddy and usually at the bottom you will have all of this powder. So I just use a little brush and just pick some of the powder up and just go in on the side of the tape. So whether you're using foam tape or you know this one, I might just dump it in there actually, it's a bit easier. I, you know, you're always going to have sticky sides. If you do this, it means whatever you put inside will run and move nice and freely. 
you can wipe away any excess and clean all that up in a moment but I'm just gonna just cover this and it will just get rid of all the static that you will always get in shaker cards and you'll always find one will always stick anyway it'll find somewhere where you've missed but I'm just going over all of that there like so and then I've got a bigger brush here and I can just kind of tap out any excess and that will also buff it up okay so now we've got a nice piece ready make sure yeah all the other bits are from the outside so you do want to make sure that you've got no bits inside then I'm going to grab the shaker bit so I want to have the cogs on the front so I'm going to turn them all upside down I'm hoping this is going to work and then I'm going to pop these in here there we go then you want to take the backing off actually I'm just thinking usually no it's fine because this is a circle it would be easy to match up so sometimes what I well no I usually put my sequin pieces on this piece and then turn it over because it's easy to um, see but because it's exactly the same size this will it's fine to do it this way okay so we've got no writing in there or anything but I do want to make sure that that stay oh it do, actually doesn't matter at all because there's literally no writing on anything at the moment so you just want to sit this over the top and there's no second chances <laughs> so let's just make sure that's really secure turn it over oh look how cool is that and they just move so much nicer now there's just no sequins really sticking anywhere and again once it starts moving around there we go that stands up like that oh it looks so nice oh, I love this I wish I had my granddad granddads both of them I wish I had them still here one I never met and one died when I was 12 and I just I know they would have loved something like this so anyway never mind so then should have told you you need to stick this piece in it's like that one I forgot haven't I but that will go you see now like that looks so good so I'm going to try and see if I can get so I would stick it when I stuck that lovely pattern piece on the back you want to stick that over there so I'm going to just pop a little bit of um grab my there it is I'm just going to use this glue here a little bit on the bottom and what I'm going to do because I've got the flat part of the top of the card there so I'm just going to very carefully just lift yeah I can I think I can get away with it I'm just going to kind of prise that open a little bit then you've got so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little hinge on that piece I mean you don't have to sometimes they don't always hold so maybe you can just go and stick I was going to have it so that would be on the back because that's kind of how my thought process was that you know you have that on the back of a pocket watch you have that you know engraved and that's what my I think I'm still going to stick with that like that and then I'm going to put a little stopper in inside because sometimes you know people might have like a shiny mantle and it doesn't matter how you know strong your card is things can slide off so I'm going to stick with what I intended so I'm going to stick that one on the back because it's the exact side size this one obviously you want to write on but um, mine is a demo piece so you will see this on Hachanda in I think next week by the time this goes out I'm just thinking yeah so I'm going to take the backing off of them again make sure everything's nice and straight and stick that right down on the back I mean, again, I guess you could put another, I'll probably end up doing that, is put another piece, because that's, a, you know, um, symmetrical, so it doesn't matter what side it is. Obviously, this one, I could, yeah, I could die cut that as well, just flip over the mirrored cardstock. I just think it might look nice on the back to have the same mirrored, so I'll probably do that off camera, but yeah, you can also do that. And then we've got these tiny little hands, so I'm going to do, probably do 10 to 2, that's like the... Um, that's the time that they say you should have, um, no, was it 10 to 10? No, 10 to 2 is the, um, 10 to 10 is cowboy time, isn't it? This is um, 10 to 2 is 
the, the display time that you see whenever you go into like clock shops and stuff. So I'm going to have that there and then this is going to kind of hang. I'm wondering whether it should hang down from there with a little piece of gold thread or from there because I don't want it to take away from it. So with these ones here, because they're so tiny, I'm just going to use a very small amount of this glue. I wouldn't usually use this kind of glue on acetate, but because it's such a small amount, um, it should be, let me get this out, it should hold okay. There's not going to be any kind of pressure on this piece. I'm going to make sure I get that right in the middle. Let me grab my little tweezers. Bring that up there, you can see. Oh, I really like it. Right, let's just get that piece attached. Okay, so I just pulled that one out, but I think that's a bit too heavy. So I've just got this really light organza, which I think would be nice. I also just found the other one, which I think is actually the main one, and that's the second hand. So I might just see if I can still move that one around a little bit. I'm actually going to put a very small embellishment as well in the centre of this one. I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. just think it could do with a little you know, piece just to kind of cover them all. There we go. Oh, that looks better. Just see, it kind of catches the light. So this one, so I'm just one of worried that's not going to hold it very well because there's going to be a bit of weight to it. But it does look nice there. No, I think I can end up sticking it all together. The ends there. And what you can do is I'm now going to tack that just onto the front of the, the watch there. And then that way it will not move because you're not going to see that. So it actually falls right on that space there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of mirrored cardstock, um, a little bit of red tape, and then just peel the backing off. So I've just put a very small bit just there because oh, now when I sit that one down, where it wants to naturally fall. Yeah, there we go, that whole piece now. Look at it, oh my gosh. Guys, you need to see it in real life, it's amazing. <laughs> Let me just move that out of the way for the minute. There we go. I think that is absolutely a gorgeous project. I love this, I love all the cogs. I just, yeah, I'm really, really taken back by this. I think it's such a nice piece. Then you've got room on the back there. I'm going to do that off camera. Just add some more mirrored card. And then on the inside there, actually, I should mention that because not all of you will know how to do that. But whenever I usually make circular cards or rocker cards, you'll see I add a little piece inside. So for this one, I'm going to do, do one inch by, um, let's do two and a half. And then what you want to do is score at... Do half an inch and two inches, and then score at one and a quarter. Okay, the top two, sorry, the two outer ones are going to become mountain folds, the middle one will be a valley. Okay, like so. Again, so you want something like that, looks like Wonder Woman. There we go. And then um, just pop some glue on each of those tabs. I mean you may choose to write inside yours and that's totally fine but I do find sometimes that yeah they, they might slide open and then just bring it up you want to stick it let's do this one first about there and then just close the whole thing down now it, then it won't spread like kind of flatten if it was to you know sometimes with cards like I said if they're on a slippery surface they're just flatten if you do that now that will always stand up and it's lovely because that just levels with it and it just I really I do I absolutely adore this I think it is such a cute little card and I just like I said I wish I had my granddad here so I could give it to them but uh, no I've really enjoyed this it's been a pleasure so yeah you're definitely going to see this one again because I think clocks and time and the, those kind of phrases can be used in so many different things. So yeah, 
there you go so I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial I've kind of got myself lost in this one it's been really nice to make and uh, yeah all the links as always will be shared below and tune into Hachanda uh, like I said I'll share the dates in the description box so you get to see other demos as well and uh, yeah give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more thanks for watching bye